Hey guys, it's John again, and I'm playing an opponent I played recently, Mahatma. He was lower rated in 3 minute, but this is a 5 minute game. So maybe he just likes longer time controls? Suppose we'll sh we shall find out. Hope you guys are having a good Sunday. I'm going to be doing a little chess teaching later today. Hmm. He's thinking for a while on move three. So he played a, a London system, a very accelerated version of it, with bishop f4 on move two. Most people who play this line play um, bishop uh, f4 on move three, so they'll play knight f3 on move two, typically. Uh-huh. He's playing this in peculiar fashion. Well, e6 or c6, which is, which is the best... Huh. Uh, I'm, I'm going to play e6. I'm a little worried about queen b3, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. <clears throat> and now I'm going to play bishop d6. Sort of a weird move. Bishop g3, okay. castle. Again, I'm still wondering if he's going to play queen b3 and go after my b7 pawn and put pressure on d5. But if he does that, I wouldn't mind playing knight c6 and gambiting a pawn. c5 is tempting now. Yeah, let's do that. Break in the center. I haven't any, had anything to eat yet today. I just have my coffee. I go to Starbucks like pretty much every morning. And I get uh, three shots of espresso, a medium iced Americano, even when it's cold outside. Like right now, it's getting pretty cold here in Minnesota. And uh, the baristas think I'm crazy because I order the same drink even when it's like below freezing. I just really love iced coffee and iced espresso in particular. Really gets those creative juices flowing, you know? So I can really crush my opponents on ICC. <laughs> and chess.com, too. I haven't recorded a lot on chess.com recently. Um, I like chess.com a lot. I just, I just find that getting a good opponent is easier on here. I'm going to play a6. He, he's not going to take on c5 because it makes his e3 pawn too weak. And... I am well placed to stop him from playing e4. Like I have one, two, three, four pieces trained on that square. So he'd really love to advance e4, but it will be tough for him. Um, hmm. I could close it down and play c4, but I don't want to do that yet. I want to maintain some flexibility, so I'm just going to play simple chess. I'm not sure what his ideal plan here would be, because if he can't play e4, he he doesn't have much to do in the center. I mean, maybe his best bet is to play like rook f e1 and then maybe bishop d3 eventually. He could play f4 and try to more or less trap my bishop, but that makes a big weakness on e4. So there's a lot for him to consider. Meanwhile, I'm I'm just going to try to advance a little bit on the queen side. I'm leaving the pawn tension ambiguous because he has shown that he doesn't want to take on c5. Uh, yeah, it is just a tough call what to do because part of me wants to play b4, part of me wants to play c4. h5 is probably a good move here. Let's do that. Like oftentimes knights that are on g3, b3, g6, or b6 can get chased by rook pawns. This is something my students know. Little little trick, but they're just really not well placed most of the time uh, to deal with a rook pawn advance. Okay, so he's making room for the knight to come to e2, and then possibly reemerge on the uh, f4 square. Huh. Well. Hmm. 
It's not a bad plan. Hmm. I'm going to do this. The idea is so that knight e2 can be met by a capture on e3. Because I think this knight is is starved for squares to go to, right? Like, if I push h4, he can only go to e2. So I don't want him to be able to go to e2, f4 so easily. All right, so he... So I can go h4, knight e2, queen takes e3, but he'll win c5 eventually. <clears throat> I'm going to go c4. I've been debating whether to play that move for a while, and... It's time to make that decision. So now, now h4 is a definite threat. I mean, maybe he should play king g1 so he can go h4 knight h1 and then bring it back out on the f2 square. But, I mean, I can push b4 now, and if he captures, I get my knight into b4 and possibly coming into c2 or d3. I could play knight a5 to b3, although my knight would be undefended here, so I'm not sure about that. Okay, so he's going to go h4, knight e2, take, and then probably take here. Yeah, it's not bad. Hmm. He's still so awkwardly placed, though. It's very awkward. I, I, I should be happy to give up a rook pawn for a central pawn. So we're going to do that. I'm a little worried about my queen, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. Uh, queen h6. He can take and then play knight f4, and there's pressure on d5. It's true. But I like my structure. I, I have faith in the structure. Actually, if he follows that line I just mentioned, um, I can trade rooks and then take on d4. It's certainly an option. If I take on d4, he takes here. Take, he goes rook d1. Hmm. Bishop c2. Let's do that. I know that pawn's hanging, but like I said, I the rook d1 move and he can win d5 back. So I'm trying to rule that out by playing that move. Probably he should go rook e2 now. Knight e2. Okay. Well, let's put him in a pin. Put him in a body bag, Johnny. Huh. Let's make a, an improving move. Let's go here. Gotta play fast. Knight f4, he should play it. Yep. Rookie one, I'll expect. Okay, now we push. We push the pawns. His knight is poorly placed. And now I win material. Oh yeah. Check. That's a GG right there. Okay, um, well, that ended in a hurry. I think he didn't re really react correctly in this position. Uh, like the knight a2 moves really passive. Uh, I mean, I, I think rook e5 now would have been okay. In which case, I could play maybe rook back to d8, threatening knight c6. I could go knight c6 now, but he goes here, and this is un this uh, knight is undefended. Hmm, that was an intriguing middle game. I'm going to spare you guys the full analysis on this one. I'm just going to go to...
That position where I decided to push the h-pawn all the way down to h4, that was an interesting position to me. Wow, the convention really likes my position here. Okay, we're going to skip this. It just seemed like uh, right around here I had a very nice game. Okay, so this, this position. Now, I was mentioning how the knights that are on uh, these squares, g3, g, uh, g3, b3 for white, and g6, b6 for black, they often get chased by the opposing rook pawns. So that's what I was trying to do with h5. I was trying to chase it off that square. But then again, this knight is not even that well placed here. It's dominated by my bishop, and the only thing it really does is assist him in playing e4. So computer just says go c4. You know, let's say bishop f1, queen e7, okay, it's kind of similar to the game. So h5, a3, I guess I should have uh, proceeded with my plan, h4, knight e2, queen takes e3, okay. Well, I thought he would just win a pawn with this move, though. Oh, d4. And his knight does not have good options. <laughs> it says knight takes b5 is the best move. Really? Like if knight a2, he is in super trouble. Bishop c2. Yeah, I mean, my pieces are really active. So like now if he goes rook uh, d2, I have pawn d3. Rook c1, pawn d3 is good as well. Okay, so I, I could have been more decisive and just struck immediately with h4 instead of getting fancy with queen e7. It was not necessary. Or getting fancy with c4, perhaps. Okay, I made the right call here. Queen h6, still an advantage. Take, take. Bishop c2. Oh, knight e8. Why would I play knight e8? Where's the knight going? c7? Hmm. And then maybe it helps me push a5, b4, since my pawn on b5 will be defended. Huh. And rook b8, not so good. Just take on e2, the comp says. Now it's roughly equal. Yeah, rook e5, he should have done that. Net a2, not good. b4, mm -hmm. And then it was over in a hurry. I was losing material here and made it easy after rook f5. Well, I think white should definitely not repeat this line. Um, f3, I don't think it's such a good move here. Probably they should play knight f3 instead. But hope you guys enjoyed this video against Mahatma. And please leave me any feedback in the comments. Thanks, guys.